Hi, I'm Marcus with IndieMusicLab.com. So have you ever wondered how Phoebe Bridgers achieves that very warm and intimate indie rock vocal sound? Well, my friend, you've come to the right place because today you're going to learn how to achieve that Phoebe Bridgers style vocal inside of any DAW you might be using. So let's jump right in. Now, what I have here is a little recreation of Phoebe's song, Kyoto, which sounds like this. Day off in Kyoto, I ordered the temple looked around at 7-Eleven. Right, so this is the vocal sound that we are striving for. So how do we achieve this? Well, I'm going to walk you through step by step precisely how I came to this sound and I'm going to walk you through that chain of plugins and everything that I did. So the first thing that you should know is, let me turn all the plugins off, including this here, just turn everything off and then... Right, so it's not drastically different from the original recording. And that's an important point I just need to make up front here is if you're going for that very intimate, dry, indie rock vocal sound, this genre is especially difficult to get away with a bad vocal take. So my point being, learn how to sing, improve your ability to get a good take from the jump, because that is going to make mixing this type of vocal so much easier and it's gonna make your life so much less miserable when you do that. And I'll leave a link or two below if you wanna check out some resources to help you start improving your singing abilities. So let's dive into now what I did to mix this vocal take. So again, here's the dry vocal. So what I'm doing here is this is my lead vocal track here in red. I'm sending this to the lead vocals bus, which is just like a habit of mine that I do by default. Um, even though I wouldn't have had to. But the first thing that I did is I ran this through, and this is a Studio One feature where you can run it through a console shaper, which is basically like an analog emulation where you run it through a console. Uh, and I just turn up the drive a little bit with a bit of crosstalk. Um, and that can help warm up the sound, give it just a slightly more of an analog flavor. Now you don't need this exact plugin, you can just use like any type of saturation plugin and just make it very subtle and that can help warm up the sound. Uh, and then the next in the chain, we have just a basic auto tune, this is Waves Tune. And this is auto tuning very lightly, as you can see, speed at 16, note transition at 100. Now I don't think Phoebe has any auto tune on her vocal uh, on the original recording. The only reason I put some on mine is because this was sort of a off the cuff take. It's not like I, you know, did this super professionally. It was like, I'm gonna release this song, it's gonna be perfect. I just threw it together. And so just to take care of some uh, potential slight imperfections that might be distracting, I just threw a very mild auto tune on there. After that, we've got an EQ. Now adjusting EQ properly is a huge part of getting this sound. Because when you compare Phoebe's vocals and the EQ of her vocals to a lot of other artists, especially in the pop, alternative rock genres, her vocals sound very dark and very warm. It's almost like there's a blanket. It's almost like it sounds like this, right? It feels very blanketed. And so when you're going for that, there are this range right here is obviously the high range is what you want to focus on. And there are three distinct moves that I want you to be aware of and at least try and see if it can help you achieve this type of sound. The first move let's look at here is a big cut at 2K. Now, depending on your voice, you might not have to make this big of a cut. I do this because of the harshness of my voice. For whatever reason, I tend to have too much in the 2K range. It's that ah, ah kind of sound. And so I did a huge cut there. It's that honky sort of 2K range. So let's bring that back down to where it was. So that is the first range that you wanna look for is the 2K, I would say between 1K and 2K, those are the nasal zones where you, you can get a bit of that wonky, honky nasal sort of sound and sometimes it can be too much. So you may want to make a cut there. The other place you wanna look for is the two to 5K range. The two to 5K range is where you get that sparkle, that brightness, that in your face quality and Again, what did I just say? Phoebe has much less of that quality than a lot of her contemporaries do or a lot of other artists in similar genres, even in indie rock. 
That's the range. You don't beat me too. And she, again, it's a blanketed sound, so we want to make a cut in that range as I did here. Now, I should note here that if you're using, say, a dynamic microphone or just a microphone that is warmer, that doesn't have all those high frequencies, then perhaps you just leave the 2 to 5K range alone, especially if you're used to always boosting in that range to get your vocals to cut through the mix, right? However, if you have any type of normal, very bright sounding condenser microphone, mine tends to be fairly bright, then often a cut in this range for this type of vocal sound can be a great move and often necessary move. And then the third EQ move you can make to get this warm analog type of sound is by doing a simple filter cutoff on the top end. So this would be high cut, also known as a low pass filter. So up here, I just rolled off everything below 9.85K. Right, so you can bring this. I could have even gone even more if I wanted to, if I really wanted to. Okay, so we, we do have the doubles going on back there, so let's come back to where the verse is. See, there's where you have more of the high frequencies. It warms it up, gives it that analog type of quality, which I love. So let's bring this back down to where it was as it was at around 9K. So that's EQ. Those are some of the EQ moves you can experiment with and see if it can help you achieve this type of sound. By the way, if you want a resource to really help you accelerate your vocal EQ skills, then go download my free guide. It's called my visual guide for fixing vocal EQ problems. It's very simple, very straightforward, and I've got some of the most common EQ problems we face with vocals, and then I have the solution mapped out visually, and that'll really help you get you off your feet and alleviate some of the confusion and bring you some clarity when it comes to EQing your vocals. So I'll leave a link in the description. It's 100% free, so be sure to check that out if you're struggling with EQ. So. Now let's dive into the compression on this vocal chain. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I have my three-step compression system that I tend to use all the time. The first compressor in that chain is a balance compressor. So it's balance compressor, compressor, glue compressor, and punch compressor. And I use that as in a stacked way. I don't make one compressor do all the work. That's not a good way to approach it you want to use two or three different compressors. And in this case, I have three. The first compressor is a balanced compressor, as you can see here. Fast attack, fast release, we're just shooting down the loud parts. All this is doing is dynamic control. If the loudest part of your vocal is up here and the quietest part is here, it turns down the loud part, that way there's less variation, and then you can turn up the overall volume, and then you're here. That way you don't have all this dynamic variability where you hear the vocal in the mix and then you lose it in the mix. You don't want that. You want that consistency, and that is what this compressor does. I didn't As you can see, it's call me from a pay phone. They still got pay phones. It costs and it's reducing it up to three, four, five, six, even hits the six to seven dB on the gain reduction knob, or meter rather. Uh, so it's just shooting down the louder parts to bring everything into more of a cohesive, consistent sound. So that's the first compressor. The second compressor is what I call the glue compressor. And again, this is my Joe Gilder technique that I learned from Joe from Home Studio Corner is where you turn the threshold all the way down, the ratio all the way down, and then attack, medium attack, medium release, and then you slowly raise the threshold up until you start to get some gain reduction. Sorry, you turn the ratio up until you start to get some gain reduction. The threshold is all the way down, so it's not going to take much on the ratio. Tell me you're getting sober, you wrote me a letter, but I don't have to read it. Yeah, so that gives that vocal some nice glue and it starts to feel more like a compressed and uh, professional sounding vocal. Now you don't have to use these weird settings like I did here where I turn the threshold all the way down and then have a very low ratio. The key is medium attack, medium release like I have here. And then you can even just stick with a two to one or four to one ratio. The point is we just want to initiate some glue and unlike what we did with the balance compressor with fast attack, fast release, medium attack, medium release gets that compressor. It hangs on to the audio a bit longer and it waits a little longer to attack it as well. So it gives it more of that compressed sound. It's now affecting the sound and it's gluing that vocal together ever so slightly. 
the next compressor, the third compressor we have here, is my punch compressor. Now with a punch compressor, I, I love using anything that's analog style, analog modeled. And so here in the Fat Channel inst inside of Studio One, I have the FET compressor. And it's fast attack, medium release is basically what you want to do. Now with this compressor, basically no matter the setting, it's a pretty fast attack. That's just the nature of this compressor. So if you happen to have any of these analog modeled compressors, I know Slate Digital has a bunch of good ones, Waves has a bunch of good ones, and even in your DAW you might have some stock that look more like this and less like the basic stock compressors. And I really like using these to achieve that final bit of punch and bringing it to the front of the mix, and that's what this type of compressor does. So. As you can see, we're doing about 3 to 4 dB of gain reduction when the chorus hits and it gets a little louder. That's about the same. We're at about 4 to 5 dB of gain reduction, and uh, that is what's going on there. So we've covered now a bit of saturation at the onset, right? And then EQ and compression. That in of itself has gotten us basically 80 to 90% of the way there. From here, we can experiment and have a little fun. So what I did was I pulled in RC20 just to see what it would sound like. And I'm only using two of the settings here. It's distortion and the magnetic knob inside of RC20. The band took the speed train, so went to the it. arcade, wanted to... Gives it that, more of that tube analog sound. And why is that? Well, we got the tube distortion going on here. A little bit of this magnetic... Go, but I didn't. Call me from a payphone. Okay, so it adds a bit of that uh, inconsistency to it. They still got pay... Again, it's an analog flare that we're adding with RC20. And this is why I love this plugin. It's so versatile, you can use it on everything. Hey phones, it costs a dollar a minute. Now you don't need to use RC20 for this if you don't own the plugin. If you've got just another saturation you could try or a stock distortion and just use it ever so slightly to add a bit of that grit and even compression because distortion and saturation are also forms of compression. And so they do add that bite and that compression compression to the sound as well. And then finally, to wrap it up, I threw one more EQ move on here. Uh, I felt like it needed a cut in the low mid range, a slight cut at 200 to get rid of some of that excess mud. To tell me you're getting sober, you wrote See, me a letter. After the, especially after we add the RC20, it made that sound a bit more low mid range focused. And so I wanted, I liked the overall sound, it just added a little bit too much of it. So then to counterbalance that, I went in and did a cut in that range on an EQ. Better, but I don't. So this is often how you want, this is how you want to mix. This is how this process works. You add a plugin and that adds some positive elements, but then it also adds perhaps a negative that you want to fix with an EQ. So it's a very reactive sort of process. And then finally, I have a compressor here, which this is actually just a de -esser. So any type of de plug plugin you can use. Uh, I tend to use just my stock compressor in Studio One because you do have the filter, uh, sidechain filter option here where it have to works literally it. just like a DSR does. I'm gonna kill. Wait, it looks like I forgot to actually initiate it. You if you don't beat me to it. Dreaming through Tokyo Sky. Yeah, it looks like I forgot to actually turn the threshold down. Well, now it's DS. There we go. So, one more thing, real quick, when it comes to the lead vocal processing here is I'm sending it to a slap delay, and that's it, because I did have it sent to a plate, but I ended up turning that off. And I'm not sending it to a quarter note delay either, so let's remove that. The only thing I'm sending this lead vocal to is a little bit of slap delay, which I have set up here on a return track, also known as an effects channel in Studio One, and I just have a very basic slap delay where the left and the right are slightly offset, and then the feedback at zero, so it only slaps back once. And an important part here is the EQ cut on the high end. The high cut is all the way down to 2K. That's important because, again, we're going for a very warm analog type of sound, and so we don't want that delay to have all those high frequencies. 
so that's why I did that. Let's turn this delay up so you can really hear it. People looked around at the 7 Eleven. The band took the speed train went to. And so that's the sound, right? I love using slap delays as a replacement for when you want a very short room reverb. I just think slap delays sound better. And that's why I went with it. I wanted to add a little bit of ambience. Uh, nothing long, nothing crazy, because we're not tr going for a long ambient vocal sound. We want just a very short, like we're in a little room. And uh, so that's why I sent the vocal to a slight amount of slap delay. Now, real quick, before we wrap up the video, let's talk about the doubles that I have here. Because we have a couple doubles when the chorus hits where the lead vocal stays the same. There's no added processing, which is unusual because I usually do some automation, but for this, I didn't feel like it was necessary. The automation kind of happens naturally by adding in these doubles. It gives that same effect. And so we have these two doubles here. Let me sew these. I'm gonna kill you. Now for both of these double tracks here, we've got a compressor, which this is the balance compressor, just turning down those loud parts, giving it a more balanced, even sound. And then an EQ where we filter off the top end. So uh, it kind of feels even more blanketed than the lead vocal. That way the lead vocal takes precedence and the doubles kind of sit underneath it ever so slightly. Now an interesting thing about when you listen to the original on Phoebe, on this song Kyoto by Phoebe Bridgers is those doubles are not out wide. It's everything is very mono when it comes to the lead vocal and the two doubles. And so that's interesting because we take it for granted that when we record doubles, they need to go out wide. One needs to go left, one needs to go right. That's not always the case. And it gives it a very unique and cool sound if you really isolate certain things down the middle and then have other things on the sides. So what's happening in Phoebe's song here is you have the lead vocal and the doubles are very mono, but then you have the instrumentation and the guitars and things like that that are out on the periphery. So I say that to say, don't necessarily always follow the rule of if you have doubles, they need to be pan left and right. That's not always the case. Sometimes they sound even better when you go mono and give it that extra focus, if you will. So that is what I did here. I'm sending both of these to my background vocals bus these doubles here, which is here. And then I just threw through the JJP vocals plugin, which I love throwing this type of plugin on anything where I just want quick processing, um, especially for backgrounds where I, that way it's less work and it gives me the sound I need. And then EQ where we have a big old cut in the low range, low mid range, and then a big old cut up in this range again to leave some room for the lead vocal to shine. That way these doubles can come more underneath where you almost feel them more than you hear them. So here is, they sound like solo. If you don't beat me to it. And then I'm sending them to a short plate reverb as well. So I have a plate reverb set up over here and uh, I guess it's not that short, it's two and a half seconds and with an EQ. So it's a very warm reverb as you can see. I've got the EQ filtered off all the way down to 2K. So let's solo the lead vocal I'm and then bring in the doubles. I'm gonna kill you. If you don't beat me to it, dreaming through. It gives it that very natural chorusy sound, right? It's almost like we added a chorus plugin to the lead vocal, except there, there is no chorus plugin. We just added two additional takes and it gives it that effect. So one more quick thing I'll mention when it comes to the vocals is I do have the harmony vocal coming in when the chorus hits. basic harmony vocal. And then I did put some extra processing on it where I've got a little bit of extra tuning. I threw saturation on it. I threw some reverb on it uh, with a mix at over 50%. So it's drenching it quite a bit. And then an EQ to cut away around the two to 5K range to warm it up a little bit more. So that's basically it. That is how I achieved this type of intimate, dry 
Phoebe Bridgers style of indie rock vocal. All right, now I'm gonna play this song from start to finish, or at least the part that I remade. Before I do that though, I wanna let you know one more time about my free guide, a visual guide for fixing vocal EQ problems. This is a very simple, to the point, visual guide to help you actually fix problems on your vocals. So if your problem is too muddy, make this cut, right? And I show you visually what all the cuts and the boosts look like. You've got eight of the most common problems that you and I run into with vocal EQ, and I have the solution mapped out for all those eight problems as well. So link is in the description. It's 100% free. It's really gonna help you out, so make sure that you grab yourself a copy. All right, here is the song, or the remake of the song Kyoto by Phoebe Bridgers, and I'm just gonna play this and then wrap up the video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Day off in Kyoto